bands. Sean T. S. is who I am. Check that is who I am. You <laughs> tuned into episode 117 of the Black Male Podcast. Yeah, listen to that, 117. Yeah, man. We up y'all, there. We... Y'all quit at episode 20 because y'all didn't get enough views. <laughs> Trash. Trash. <laughs> it's a bunch of people that's done that too. That's the sad part about it. Y'all should. Y'all should... <laughs> Y'all stop rapping because y'all paid for a hundred thousand views and nobody cared. Yo, yeah, this is you, funny. As you I, too. I um the old MC and me almost um this one this is a guy I know. <clears throat> he um he came at me on some rapper shit. And I was like, huh? I was like, bro, I ain't rapping years, bro. Like, I'm the radio guy, behind the scenes guy. That he started throwing his accolades out. I said, "Bro, them shit." I, I had to. I had to get a little. What? Um, what do you mean? You got a Grammy? Right. No, I got shit. Yeah, I said, "Bro, them local stats." Like, I was like, "Name, name the tours you've been on." You know what I'm saying? Name the name the people that that respect you as as a as an artist who who be trying to get you to get back into this shit. Like, name how much money you made on and off rap. Like let's let's start let's start there, and um like he did it on the timeline on Facebook, just so happened we got some of the similar people right, on the timeline. No, you're not talking like on the timeline, right? <laughs> and that's why I got in my shit because now I'm like, all right, let's let's get in my shit. So a couple of my peoples jumped in there who you know people who know know both of us. <clears throat> One dude say, yo TS yo, yo didn't you tour with such and such and such and such over? I say, yup. Yo, T, another one. Yo, because I battle rap for a while too. Dude was like, yo, you remember when you battle rap old boy from Grind Time who created Grind Time? I was like, yo. That nigga still got an interview saying that you was his toughest battle, even though he won. He did win that battle. He won that battle, but we had to go into like overtime with that battle. And the dude posted the interview where the dude said, Yo, it was some guy named T.S., man. That was the toughest battle I've ever had. And I was sitting there like, and I told dude, and I put in, I said, look, you, I said, you see how I don't have to speak for myself? Others do it. Can they do the same for you? <laughs> and then the nigga deletes the post. <laughs> oh, he deleted his post? <laughs> yeah, he deleted the post, bro. And I meant to screenshot it because it was so funny to me. Erica even saw, I saw E, and she was like, she was like, why everybody vouching for you? I said, because I did it. He didn't do it. He didn't do nothing. He talking like he lived it. He didn't do nothing. I don't know what niggas get out of that shit. And I don't even brag about none of this shit I've done in rap as an MC. I never brag. I don't act like I can rap. I just keep it moving. I do behind the scenes stuff and, and keep it pushing. I keep saying that I'm going to do a project one of these days, but I just, I don't have the energy. I got... Beats for days. I just don't have the energy to even want to put pen to pad. At least shake off the rust. But when people do shit like that, I'll be like, bro, for me, it's been years and I still don't have to speak for myself. Like, watch your tone when you talk to me. Watch your tone, my guy. I don't even respond to that kind of stuff, but I feel you. <laughs> I enjoy it from time to time. You know, I'm a troll. Like, like do ask me, you still doing that podcast? I left that, yeah, that shit. Yeah, that was corny. Sitting. I left that shit sitting right there. Yeah, that was corny. Right up under the picture. I let that comment sit right there. <laughs> episode dropped on this past Friday, sir. Bro, <laughs> this like, is a current episode right here. Yes, we have 117. The podcast is still going. The little like podcast dude, um, is still going. This dude I know from back in the days, I never met him personally, but he's always done music. 
always had a podcast. He's more so into promotions and stuff. He has his own promo company or whatever. And he asked me, yo, man, you still you still rhyme, whatever? And I'm thinking like, bro, you've been Facebook friends for like, from the beginning of Facebook. If you'd even ask me that shit, I ain't responding to you, bro. <laughs> Dudes will see your whole video and still ask you, you still rhyme. <clears throat> this is my problem with that kind of shit, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just never been on it like that, man. I'll, I'll actually go to your page before I ask you a question like that. Facts. That Same shit don't take but a second. That's just business. Right. Because if I did want to use you to help promote my product, now I don't. No, I don't. Because you said some stupid in. shit. Yeah. You tapped in. Promo people keep up on who popping. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who, who at least still doing something that's worth hitting up. Bro, like, if you doing promo... Ain't it better for you to work with niggas that got good quality product? That makes you, you that's that's you better. You would for hope. You. you would hope. You would hope. That's like if you shoot videos, you would rather shoot a video for a nigga that got a popping record. Yes. Everybody I know shoot video tell me all the time how hard it is to shoot a video for a record that's total trash. Oh no, it's the worst shit ever. Because you got to sit there and hear that shit a hundred times. You hear that. Yes, a hundred thousand times. A hundred thousand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and you're not just listening to like the whole record all at one time. You piece by piece because you chopping and you listen to the same spot over and over. And then you, especially when you sinking and you're like, man, that's how you can tell when somebody fucking up. you like, you done shot this shit, mad angles. And you're like, this nigga, man. Young man, find young man I work with, this. He's, a, he's a photographer and he's getting into doing videography. And he showed me a video he shot. And he even said it. He said, bro, <laughs> he said, this song is so bad, man. He was like, a dude didn't change clothes. It's just the scenery he gave me. Dude was my man was like, you know, when I'm new to shooting videos, and he was like, yo, this was so hard to do, man. He, <laughs> he's like, like I didn't know what else to do with this thing, man. Like he just kept acting like we had enough footage, and his, his outfit was terrible. I just, I was like, bro, that's part of shooting a video, man. It was yeah. like, you know, you're doing it for the. I'm You're done. doing it for the money. You're doing it for the craft. Either way, an artist should be able to tell you at least a blueprint on what he expects or what he wants. He said, dude gave him nothing but the song. And it was terrible. Hey, I am Auto cool. Auto-tune everything. I ain't shooting no more videos. I'm good. You lying. No, I'm not lying. Unless it's for you. I'm not shooting no more videos. I don't count, nigga. What the fuck? You don't count, nigga? No. <laughs> Nigga, no. You don't count. <laughs> you don't. You don't count. Cause you got. You know why you don't count? Cause you got first dibs on all of the shit. <laughs> so whatever I mean, I'm working on, I'm doing. You automatically get. You don't count. I don't put you in the equation. I just know I'm doing it. Yeah. That's it. Yo, uh, Trey needs something. Let me go and get that done for my boy. That's it. I Everybody mean, else, I'm not doing that shit. Don't hit me about no videos. Oh, okay. I mean, you threw me off like, what the fuck? No, 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 you don't count, nigga. Because you know it's good. Because you know if you hit me, yo, son, um, you know how you be doing? Um, yo, I got this song. Nah, that's not how it happened. <laughs> no, it's not happening. You picked the This record. time I picked it. Yeah, yeah, this time I picked it. It's, it, it's, it's going to be hard for me to say, yo, I need you to shoot this video. I would say, yeah. honestly, and I'll tell on myself. If you fuck around here, wreck it, they'd be like, yo. I still hard. need the lyrics. I still need the lyrics for that one song. Oh, I forgot. All right, you do that. Sneak around. I could have had it done already. I already got something in mind. That shit was going to be hard. Pause. No, no, no. Hard is good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pause, nigga. Whoa, this nigga, wow. <laughs> oh, no, it ain't. Oh, shit. That depends on who said it. <laughs> You you hear that you hear that comedian when he said he met the woman and they were kissing and he was like, girl, I'm hard as hell. And she said, I'm hard too. <laughs> I ain't hear that. I'd have got I'd have left, son. Nah, this is back before like the uh I'm gonna choose my words uh, safely before that lifestyle became very popular. Right. right. Now you couldn't tell that joke now. You can't tell that joke. Now. <clears throat> hey, even though comedians are starting to I was saying, fuck you it that. now. They start no, to say, you, fuck it now. Do you think stand up comedy is going to have a resurgence? Because you yes. know, it was a dry spell for a while because everybody yeah. was getting canceled for stating certain things. Because, you know, Country Wayne got the number one show on um, Netflix. Right. 
I mean, I didn't watch it. I really don't think he's funny. I'm, I, I might check either. it out eventually. I don't think he's that funny either. But a couple of the bits I've heard, it was it was pretty good. I was called a hater because I said I don't think he's funny. Now, how am I a hater when I posted Bro, he has the number one show on Netflix? I stated he has the number one show on Netflix. I said, but I never really thought he was funny. I have to check it out. Like, how we is use that hater hate? for everything? We use hater for everything. No matter what it is, we use hater. No matter what it is. <laughs> and they weren't joking. They dead ass was like, I'm hating. I'm like, bro, you didn't even know they had a show. <laughs> See, I don't think he's funny neither. Okay. He has funny moments, but I don't like none of them skits. I don't watch none of those skits. I respect what he's done. I respect what he's done and what he's doing to feed him and his 20 kids. You know what I mean? What he did, I think, was dope because once he realized that the church people were a fan of what he did, he catered to them. Tyler Perry. I mean, you can say that. He followed That's their the blueprint. Tyler Perry method. The church people are giving him the church, church people are going to support you. I'm yep. you show them something different. Mm-hmm. They don't need us. And his shit ain't even like overly clean. It ain't like a super clean show, but it's not a it's not a dirty show. Well, he ain't gonna do a whole lot of F bombs and MFs. Mm-hmm. Even if, if he does use even if he does use profanity, which I haven't heard, I mean, he does it in such a clean way. Like he just it seems like he just slipped up on a word. Right. But I, res- I respect cool. I respect what he's doing. I respect I'm the grind. Not- he, he's consistent. He's very consistent. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan, but I respect what he's doing. Um, I don't I don't watch really no one Netflix special really like that. So I'm a Netflix documentary person. Say. Me too. I love their documentaries, bro. Me too. I actually started watching one on wrestling because I, I was wondering what it was about. Which one? The o, the OVN joint? The new one wrestlers? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought you was watching that Cassandra one. That's what that is? It's, yeah, it's one out there that's called Cassandra. I saw it on the, on the thing, but I didn't know if I would like it. Yeah, it's wrestling. I do want to watch that uh the John Wick spinoff joint that just started, the Continental. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely watching that. Definitely I heard watching that was the crazy. Continental. Definitely watching the Continental. I and I just it. got done watching um um the last um John Wick two. Yeah, that was dope. The fourth one. That shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah, I was I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> Action from the top to the bottom. Sir. It was that Didn't blind he... dude was serious. Bro, then he died at the end. It was like, but kind of, you know, he kind of had to go. I mean, after four parts, though, bro, what, what more you gonna do, man? Right. You don't think four and he parts knew he was, I think he knew he was going to end up dying anyway. It's like, no, get up out of here. Four parts is good. Uh, die, uh, did all, but you know, the black dude, even though he died at the beginning, you know, he died in real life. That's the crazy part. Yeah, he passed in real life. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's super crazy. crazy. He played the Lola. Yeah, he killed that man. Let's let's talk about sports real quick. We're not gonna talk about the Dion aspect. I want to say that for regular conversation because I think it's a little more than just sports. But um, like Absolutely. right now with NFL, um, you know, right now it's a bunch of undefeated teams. So who you think gonna lose their undefeated? Like by the time people hear this, possibly somebody would have lost their undefeated on um, this. I know both of our squads are undefeated. I don't think we. I I think we're gonna stay undefeated. You know, saying this week. I'm, my team, my Eagles playing the Bucks. Your team is playing the Cardinals. Cardinals ass and the Bucks is all right. I don't. I don't see y'all losing to Baker Mayfield. Me neither. You know what I'm saying? Although he he hasn't been playing bad though. No, he hasn't. He hasn't been playing bad at all. I don't know. I would say um. I don't see y'all losing to Kyler Murray. I see. I I think. Well, it would have to be the Buccaneers then. What you mean? You said the first team undefeated. Team oh yes, right. Yeah, because Bucks is undefeated as well. So it would yeah. be the Buccaneers. So it right. would have it would have to be Buc- Buccaneers, unless the uh, the Falcons or the Saints lose early, because the um the Falcons are playing the Lions. The Lions is nice though. Yeah, so I can see the Falcons losing to the Lions because if you look by the time the time frame, it would be mm-hmm. the Falcons. Right. I would say the Falcons, the Buccaneers, and then maybe the Saints because the Saints play the Packers. Yeah. And I really don't have faith in the Saints. Like that, me neither. And that boy Jordan Love is looking like he's a good quarterback. Right. I just wish the Saints go ahead and start my guys. Go ahead and start Jameis Winston. Jameis, all we do is win Winston. Hey, I seen a podcast where they said the Giants need to trade for Jameis Winston. I ain't mad at that. 
I, I, I didn't say nothing bad. I'm like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all about the quarterback with the Giants, but even if but it's, it's not, a it's a great deal about the quarterback no, with this, the Giants. This, this is what I'm saying, the way I'm coming from with this. <laughs> even me. if it's not a, even if it's not about the quarterback, bro, how long do you just keep the same person around? Oh. Nothing is getting better with this guy, even if it's not his fault. You need right. to change the direction of the team. Yeah, because that offense, they need to change the coach. Go ahead and let him off. And they probably need to get rid of old boy. Because... If Jameis Winston don't do nothing else, he's going to throw the ball like crazy and you'll get some touchdowns. He yep. might throw some interceptions, but they need no. something. No, let's not say might. Let's not say might. I'll give him a little credit. Man. No, 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 no. On the Sean Payton, some... he, he wasn't throw some... throwing picks. No, he, he wasn't. Picks on the right. Sean Payton. You're right. They wasn't letting him throw that thing, though. But he oh. threw enough. He threw enough. <clears throat> he won some games right. for them. I think with the Giants. Whoever started that Danny Dimes shit, I don't know what that's about. I don't know. What it's the, yo, that mm-hmm. offensive line is so bad, though. That offensive then it's line not, is then it's so not, then it's bad. Not his, then it's not his fault, then. <laughs> don't do that. We ain't saw that. We ain't do that on live. We ain't do that on the pod. We ain't do that offline. We did it offline. It's not his fault. <laughs> Get that man an offensive line. <laughs> he throw my own shit in my, my own words you in my started face, it. Huh? You don't started it. it. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it, I mean. I know a lot of Giant fans. They're quick to blame him. Yo, and Saquon Barkley, bro. He plays four games a year. <laughs> <laughs> what bro, good is the it? season just started. And you already you heard. This, yo. What good is it to squat 2,000 pounds if you can't play with four games a year? Yo, when you're, when you're, and then, yo, and it's, and it's not like, it's not, it's his lower body. Injuries every time. I think this time, what is his ankle? He rolled his ankle. That's my point. You got one of the strongest lower bodies in the league. Pause, but your lower body's always injured. <laughs> so it ain't the strongest. I mean, it's not funny. It's oh, it's too strong. The no, injury, that shit is funny. The injury, the injury is not funny. The injury itself isn't funny. But he one of the reasons why running backs don't get the money that they should get. This nigga bitched and moaned and complained. Finally got the bag. And then look at him. He he hurt again why they didn't want to fucking play. By game three? They ain't game three, bro. Season just stopped. They can't make the playoffs without you, so they can't be like, he'll be ready for the playoffs. He's trash, bro. Injuries are part of the game, but certain people, it's just part of their life, man. Right. He trash, bro. Trash. Ooh, that's deep. But when it comes to helping his team out. You got, according to your theory, it can't be Daniel Jones' fault if the offensive line is a problem. Daniel Jones, he holding that ball too long, too, bro. He was holding that shit way too long. Every time he was, every time he got the ball, he was like, bro, either throw that bitch out of bounds, something, bro. Run with that shit. I mean, he tried his best. That last game, he they tried. They want quarterbacks to stand tall in the pocket. No, they didn't. He got the co-sign from Peyton Manning. Huh? Peyton Yo, Manning gave him the co-sign. Everybody that Peyton Manning co-sign has been asked. Let's let's get to that. Let's who get to he, that. Who else did he co-sign? The dude over there on um Patriots. Who, the last Pat, did it? The, uh-huh. The last two um Giants quarterbacks. Is is is, is Mac Jones trash? I don't know. Because Belichick's a defensive coach. Tom Brady just made him seem like he was more than that. He's the coach, bro. You got to pick your people. I mean, I'm just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I can't tell if that guy is good people. or bad playing for the Patriots. I know he's not a generational quarterback. That's definitely obvious. How you know that? Because a generational quarterback will still make any team work somewhat. Patriots mm-hmm. offense is just terrible. A generational quarterback is not going to help that offense. Pat Mahomes would definitely make that if you, if you don't have nobody to throw to and y'all not scheming. Yo, look, I love Pat Mahomes. I love him. Do they do they not but have anybody to throw to? He needs Andy Reid scheming to be able to do some of the shit he does. Yeah, the, let's, the, let's, the, not, the, let's not act the, like the he, he was out to there. To throw 100 doing touchdowns, them. yeah. Nobody does that for themselves. Right. Okay, let's not act like he, he threw he, like 120 he, touchdowns. Like nobody does that alone. All right, I'm just making well, sure. Well, hey, Dak Prescott yeah. looking like a Hall of Famer. It's the when? scheme. Now, what? His numbers? Crazy. 
His efficiency right now was crazy. They, <laughs> they not always him... they always they... crazy. No, they not. No, they not. That nigga threw 100 interceptions in four games last year. They not letting him throw the ball all crazy. That's how you do it. He ain't built like that. Throw this ten, throw this ten yard pass right here. Throw this fifteen yard pass right here. He threw one pass deep, and the um, what's the name? Sauce dropped it. He did. Hey, you see Lamb talking? Hold on, 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 hold on. How to catch? Hold on, hold on. What? Dak had a hundred and forty three yards against the Giants. They won a hundred to zero. Let me finish. Any the offense never had the ball. Zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. His quarterback rating was 72. And you had the nerve to tell me what? that what Deion Sun did against Oregon wasn't good. But this was good numbers. I'm talking about the totality of his numbers are good because he hasn't turned the ball over and with 3 and 0. He didn't turn the ball over neither. Shador. Puts up right. big numbers. How right, you let's go to this next one. Let's let's no. This is what you do. I'm just doing what you did. No, let's go not. to the other one. Dak had two fifty five. Good game. Two touchdowns, zero Great interceptions, game. which is good. Great game. Uh, Great game. Gets the Jets. Great game. Win. <laughs> Great game. Win. No turnovers. He led the league in interceptions last year. That's what I care about. No interceptions. Great. All right. All right. He hasn't thrown a pick yet. Okay. It's coming. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. Of course it's coming. You're not going to go a whole but season. That's the no NFL. It's the NFL. Just, that happens. That's the pros. He threw on yeah. the sauce. Sauce dropped it. Yeah, you're right. If he has to throw the ball deep, I'm nervous. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's kind of Oh, that's God. what we doing. All right, let me know. That's what we doing. Thought it did. All right, that's what's up. I gotta check the temperature. No, you tried. You tried that shit earlier. You tried that shit a few minutes ago when I said something about let the check, ball. Let me check, let you me tried check that shit a few minutes ago when I did something when I said something about the ball. You, you said like, he hold his ball too long. I'm like, Whoa. I said he hold the ball. I said the, the ball. ball. I, I said his balls. I, I said he said, hold the ball. I'm like a battle rapper. I said. I said, hey, yo. <laughs> I said, hey, yo. Word. Yo, watch Tyrese on the Joe Boyman podcast. But anyway. Whatever. I did. I already did. I already watched that shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tyrese is crazy, man. I, I know too much information about that guy. <laughs> but, hey, shit, watch him. Watch the Joe Boyman pod when they speak to the BS. Um, Coach BS. Yeah, that's bullshit. God, uh, he was talking some good shit. I believe it, but he ain't do no good shit. I think he did. They still got the program. Man, that guy's a total fool. I don't know, you man. I think that documentary. You sent your son there? I think that documentary was some bullshit. You the sent your son there? Nah. Okay. Nah, because they got a digital program. It ain't like it's a school school. It's a digital school. I ain't want to send my kid to no digital school. I mean, you could say the documentary maybe made him appear to be a way worse individual than what he is because they did make him appear to be a demon. Did you watch the episode that when he was talking about stuff? He, I was, think throwing I, out pro- he was throwing out proper facts. I with, think he had I think credible he actually, backing. That's what I'm saying. I think he actually had good intentions. <laughs> I do actually think he had good intentions. I don't really think he lied to anybody, though. Really? <laughs> I just think people had their own expectations that he didn't really give. But he gave them a platform. And when you're an athlete, that's one of the main things you want. They want TV. And a, and a lot of those kids went to college, big name schools. It wasn't a lot of them, but. It was a good bit of them. But you don't, in no high school, most of a, lot of, a lot of kids are going to make most it. Of no the, high school. Most, no of high school. Team, most of the team was, the team was trash. They really were. There wasn't a lot of talent on that team. I think as only... There's only two scholarships that Bro, I Bro, you only know. it was more than two scholarships. I said that I know of, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. That he spoke about. It ain't that many more than two. A lot of them dudes weren't good. Because they were getting whooped. But you still on TV? Yeah. Somebody sent me, yo, what's up with all these spam joints, yo? People be sending them wild messages. Yo, I I got a couple messages I almost sent to you, bro. That was kind of weird, bro. Right. You're like, what the like, fuck is this? 
couple from some females or somebody fronting like they're a female. See. And then people from trying to buy property. And... Mm-hmm. Yo, I get people hit me all the time about my property. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm yeah. not selling nothing. I'm like, bro. Don't be sold over here. Bro, who is you? Right. I don't even answer because and damn sure don't click none of them links. You know anybody else that's selling? I'm like, bro, I don't know you. <laughs> give you nobody's number. Don't click them links though. Like definitely don't no, click I never click link. a link. I just I just send it to the spam junk folder. Yeah, it's the best bet. But shit, let's see. What's the next? Um, NBA talk. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard was trying out for the um Warriors. You see Steve like- go after him? Yeah, I'm about tired of that shit. Um, <clears throat> I'm about tired of him doing that. It seemed like every time every time a black player does something, he got something to say. Nobody was talking to him. So. He was speaking on a nobody podcast. Nobody was talking to him. <laughs> like, like Stephen A. Like, bro, nobody was talking to him. Bro. Nobody <laughs> was talking to him. What are you talking about? <laughs> shit, shut Yo, the fuck up, man. God damn, Stephen talked too much. Shut the fuck up, man. I know that's his job, job is to God talk. Damn. What are you talking about? God damn, I know that's your job, but God damn. Son. So was he wrong, or was he wrong in his method? I think he was wrong in his method. I can agree because I don't know why you would attack the guy. Maybe he wanted right. to play for the Warriors, right? All because he said what he said about the Warriors, and it might have been right. He could have changed what, his mind. For, right? Thank you. You can't change your mind. Someone is giving Bro, you an opportunity. You can't change your mind. Listen, I've <clears> said. <throat> All my life as an MC, I would never sign to anything owned by Puffy. Puffy come with that five hundred thousand and you said five hundred. You said uh-huh. five hundred thousand. Yeah. You think I'm waiting for five? <laughs> okay, my bad. What? They didn't give me two hundred grand. I'm out. <laughs> but I'm watching every expense. You're not charging me all the studio costs because I'm not sitting in the studio all day. You know, you know, I wouldn't even use their studios. I'd be a ski spot. I wouldn't even yeah. tell them sign. I wouldn't even tell them I'm signed, bro. Mm-mm. Just go ahead and knock it out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep moving, bro. Get them Give beats. The yeah, get them beats. Keep so, them I mean, I, I, I hate when people act like you can't change your mind. Like, having a chance to play for the Warriors, I don't think anybody would, would turn down. I actually think Dwight Howard might have been a good fit because Kevin Looney can't shoot. So I don't know why you're knocking Dwight Howard because he's a big man that can't shoot. I, I, that's that to me. That's corny. That's this. I new think. Era I think bullshit. he. I actually think he would fit in because he runs the floor. Mm-hmm. He blocks shots. He plays Kevin Looney. Kevin Looney is that. a good rebounder. Kevin Looney mm-hmm. is a good rebounder. But Dwight but he Howard is well. like he doesn't rebound like Dwight Howard. Yep, exactly. Let's give it a yep. I really don't know why teams acting like they won't give <laughs> Dwight Howard a chance. He's still in shape. Bro, I don't have a problem with him playing for the Knicks if he if he's healthy. Yep. You got Dwight Howard that's willing to just come and up. He, he hasn't missed the season. I mean, when he was back playing, he played the whole season. And he don't mind coming off the bench. Don't he don't demand the, the ball. Bench. He runs he should the be ball. A, he should be a Hall of Famer who does not mind coming off the bench. Who the Lakers got starting the center that's better than Dwight Howard? No one. Like, what? Not, what even, if, Anthony, not even Anthony Davis. You wildin'. Anthony Davis is not better than Dwight Howard. Right now. All he do is shoot. All he do is shoot. What'd he do? All he could do is shoot. What'd he do? He be in street clothes all the time. He be in street clothes all the time. What'd he do? That has nothing to do with his talent. What does he do? Yes, I'm saying that. What does he do? That's just so dramatic. What does he do? 25 and 10. Automatic, 25 and 10. Because of opportunity. Because of opportunity. So he's wrong because he puts up numbers? No, I'm not saying that he's not wrong. I'm not saying he's wrong, no right. Then why do I have it doesn't get those numbers? <clears throat> because he keep going to systems that got players that's in that position. And plus, I don't think he gets the opportunity. I when think he if he got the, the Lakers, opportunity, he would showcase He played for the that. Lakers. They he did no fine. Play he he did wasn't fine. doing 25 and 10. He, he, played in his, he played in his position. They kept trying to start Anthony Davis. And you look what that was leading them to. Anthony Davis didn't always play center, though. Nope, he didn't. He didn't come there to play center. They put him in center because they thought it was a necessity. Because he can't do nothing else, yo. Because when you get somebody on him that can defend, he can't defend at that position. No, I don't think at the four. Only, only problem at, with him is he's not healthy. Never. He can def- he can defend. His only problem is he's not I'm not healthy. saying he's not a bad defender, but he cannot defend at that position. Because as soon as they switch out to somebody that's small, because you know they do that all the time at the at the um four position, 
He gets exposed. I mean, I disagree. He gets with that, exposed. I don't think he was exposed. Okay. Tell me a time he wasn't exposed at the fourth spot. He only thing that's problem with him is his inconsistency and the fact that he's never healthy. And him averaging twenty five a game is equivalent to him scoring fifty one game. <laughs> twenty five, right? Like twenty five a game. Twenty five a game is 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 not. If you do it statistically, if you know you're getting the ball a lot, it's not that hard to do, bro. Now you you wild. Well, it's not hard for him. All to you got to do is get him. eight a quarter. You get eight points a quarter, and you end in with what you need. Bro, if that's the case, everybody would be averaging 32 a game. You're talking about eight bro, points it's all about your opportunity. It's a lot of cats that that's what they do. You're not going to get 25 points in one. Like, some players get 25 points in one half, and then they don't get nothing else. Yeah, that some happens. players don't perform in the second half. <clears> right, that them. happens. If you're a consistent player, all you got to do is score consistently – with the with the skill sets that you have in each quarter, the same way each time, it's, if it's unstoppable, you can get your average. You can get your you're average. You talking about two K? There's not too many people. I'm not like talking this. on two K. I play. What are you talking it's about, a, bro? This and I NBA, I play bro. getting my That's, points that way. Bro, this they, NBA, I watch bro. players do it all the time. LeBron does it all the time. He gets the same, does the same moves. He averages the same amount of points because he gets the same in each quarter. That's a consistent player. Kobe talks about that all the time. You can you're consistently get what you name. Comparing people to Kobe and LeBron. That's you cool. just talking about the as as whatever this bum ass nigga was supposed to be. Something you're comparing him to Kobe and LeBron. Everybody bro. else is comparing him. They giving him a Hall of Fame jacket, and he ain't no, and to me, he shouldn't even be in that position. He shouldn't even be in the top seventy five players. Yeah, but you just compare him to Kobe and LeBron. Just saying that he's that's what everybody else. Everybody's comparing his bum ass to being the top, the best player in the NBA. You can't tell me that they don't, because you know they do. I didn't know we were talking about other people, but I mean, if that's, if that's your, if I'm that's just what talking about us, on, I'm basing it off of that. But you can <laughs> I'm consistently, not, I'm not comparing him to Kobe or LeBron. These are generational talents, man. So he's not generational. Anthony Davis? Yes. No, I've never said that. All right, cool. Let's make sure we go. I've, I never made any you I've never made any implications that I even thought. I he never was. said you did, but I'm asking you a question, y'all. I think I think I think I think potentially he could have been, but I don't think he'll ever reach his potential for whatever reason. Something ain't there. If you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a transitional player, you're gonna be that from the beginning. If you ain't that, that's because that was never in you. I mean, okay. I just said talent wise, he had the gifts, but that's that's not even half of the game. The gifts is only like twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah, that's a fit act. He got a handle. He got a shot. He got a bag. But he goes through periods of time where you don't even know he's on the floor. Then what's the purpose of having a bag? When you don't even put that bitch on. I mean, he left his bag in the closet, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but he'll go a whole quarter and don't take a shot. And, and do announcers, shit. announcers will talk about it all the time. He don't do shit. You know, he, he's comfortable with just sitting back. But him being in the, in the top 75 and not Dwight Howard is, is blasphemous. Facts. That's a fitting. Being Dwight going to make it a, as a Hall of Famer when he finally retired? He should, but honestly, I don't think he will. Yeah, me neither. Honestly, I mean, I think I, I, I'll just answer that question in two ways. I think he should. I think he should think as well, but I don't think he will either. I don't know what it is that he did to piss off so many people. I don't know either, bro. I mean, he, he he has a good spirit. You know, he's a little goofy. He laughs a lot. He jokes a lot. But if you can joke a lot and still average 25 and 10, what? I don't understand that? why people Jack, want Jack you to enjoy and joke. Shaq didn't do that? Shaq they still act like Howard, They act like Dwight Howard clown all the time. I've seen him out there playing like a savage. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, he had his issues in the media. But those are social issues. I really don't see any issue with him on the court. He had a bad back. To even come back from a bad back and be able to make a roster is a lot. I agree. But even when he played with the Lakers, I was like, why is he splitting time with JaVale McGee? Like, that's not no knock on JaVale McGee. Even with JaVale McGee, teams are acting like he sucks. He's not an all-star player. 
But this dude could damn near touch the top of the backboard. Yep, still. <laughs> like, I don't understand what and he plays good D, but that's the way the NBA is now, man. They play everything a small ball. If your point if your center can't do what your point guard do, then they don't want you. And that shit is weird. I don't I don't think it makes a lot of sense, man. But okay. It doesn't. It's it's gonna take a team to buck that process to go back to what it to go back to having a traditional center and then they dominate and win. And then that's when they're gonna see. Like if oh. someone makes if someone makes Joel um and B stay his ass on the block and dominate, dominate from the block, hope he gonna if he'll stay healthy. You know, somebody forces fat ass to get in shape. That's the problem. These players aren't in shape. It's easy to stand there and shoot threes. Because if you're seven feet tall, you're shooting set shots. Mm-hmm. That's the easy way. I, I, Me and my son talk about this all the time. And I think we'll probably keep talking about it. I just don't think it makes sense to feel like if you don't shoot threes, you won't win. Yeah, you right. got to have three-point shooters, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at MB shooting one or two threes a game. Me neither. But for a player like that to shoot six, seven threes, it's ridiculous. Because when the and game him, is on the line, to, oh, yeah, that's what go. I'm saying. Yep. When the yep. game is on the line and you mm-hmm. need one point, why the fuck is MB shooting a three? I agree. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'll give a guy like DeMar DeRozan an example. He's not a big three-point shooter. Mm-hmm. But when the game is on the line and he got the rock, I feel good. Yep, me too. Because he's going to get a shot within 15 feet somehow. Yep. And I got faith he's either gonna make it or you're gonna follow him because he's gonna put pressure on the defense. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why do we act like that doesn't matter anymore? Steph Curry shooting 30 foot jumpers from in, in clutch time is not normal. It's not normal at all. <laughs> Damian Lillard, basketball. Damian Lillard doing that. That's not, not a normal. normal. That's not normal. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Then you not got every, like not everyone Randall. can do that. Then you got idiots like Julius Randle that think that makes sense. That, that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. And yeah, and I, I threw him under the bus all day. That's crazy to me. <laughs> that is crazy. Jaden Brunson, that's, that's Brunson is a point guard. Quest time, he doesn't even do that. He's trying to get to the lane. But why is that a lost art? That works. That's crazy. It to does. Me. It does it work. Always be crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Always be crazy to me. Always. This is cra- even too like that even, whole. Right. Even like when I give it a minute, he's clowning Kim Olajuwon, the dream shake, and all of that. I don't agree with that, but I thought it was funny as fuck. Yeah, me too. I thought it was hilarious. Me too. But with him, I don't know if he's trying to be funny or if he really meant what he said. I think he meant what he said, though. I do too. I was playing. He don't like none of them old niggas, bro. But I ain't mad at him for not liking none of them because none <laughs> of them like the new young kids. <laughs> I mean, do we really think? Elijah Wan's post game wouldn't work in today's game. You think it wouldn't work? I don't know. I don't know. No one is doing it. No one is doing it. So I don't know. I don't know. Nobody, people don't have a bag in the post. But Elijah Wan used to run the floor. So it's unfair to even try to say his game wouldn't work. He's not the right example because Elijah Wan could run and he could actually shoot the mid range. He can do that. But the people he teaching, it's like not yo, his get, fault though. Him getting with Joel it's and not B. his fault. If you I mean, teach get... somebody film, if you teach somebody videography and photography, and they turn out to be trash, I can't blame you for him being trash. You gave him the tools. Right. You showed him the basic foundation of photography. Mm-hmm. If you show me the basic foundation of photography and I turn out to not be good, you show me editing and I don't really catch color schemes and things too well. That's not your fault. Right. That's a fact. So I mean they can't blame Elijah. He he worked with Kobe. Kobe was shaking them. I mean, everybody's not gonna get it. And if he know you're not gonna get it, but you paid him 50 grand, what is he gonna do? Not take the 50 grand. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of taking the 50 grand. Ooh, excuse me. I mean, I'm with you. It's hey. not a bad lick. It's not a bad lick. Yo, bro, how you do this workout shit all the time, bro? <laughs> God damn, my body hurts, bro. God damn. I bro, work out a lot. I work out a lot now. I work out a lot now. It's damn near like part of my everyday life now. Bro, I man. am hurting, son. Hey, man, CMOS, man. Bro, my, like I, let me go ahead and hit the, 
pause button before we get started. It's the pause button. All right. So this is <laughs> pause. I was working on my back yesterday. Right? <laughs> so I was working on my back <clears throat> and I was doing dumbbell stomach to the on the bench, like you know, at an incline. And I'm doing, you know, the presses like this. I'm underhand like this, you know, working on this on the top, you know, working in size. And then I'm doing my my joints and working on my size. You know, I'm. it's funny because I talk shit about this. You know, I prefer, I had preferred doing a full body workout. But From now leans I'm at to the this. side, though, you better mm -hmm. off taking a kettlebell and just swinging them around your waist and doing that lean to the side stuff. <clears throat> I was about to say that. I was, I was that lean say that to the side I, can make you chunky on your Chunky on Yo, and I noticed that too. So I've had, I did that as well, and I did the uh, bar, um, the forty five plate, and I was doing this here, work around his and back and forth. That shit oh, worked pretty good. You be doing that widow hey. shit? Nah, that shit worked, bro. And you I know, it, it's, it it's, it's range shit. of motion. It's range of motion. I hear, I hear all of the ideologies and all of that stuff. A lot of that stuff causes fucking injuries, man. I get what you're saying. But those are mm -hmm. natural movements. There's a reason why I'm not sore and I don't get hurt and I get results. Because I don't do that kind of shit. I've been getting results, though. Yeah, not 20. Yeah, you're fucking sore, too. Yeah, I'm sore. It's unnecessary. Know. You get results doing know. regular core, regular compound exercise, you're going to get results. But I'll say, well, let me go back most to Most of these I people, saying. most not once you finish, but most of these uh -huh. people that show these exercises, uh -huh. they, want, they want some shit. Oh no, nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why they bodies right that's why their bodies recover. And you're sitting there sore as fuck. I used to do my gym right now trying to trying to sell me steroids. I'm good, fam. I tell them every time I'm good. I mean, <laughs> I'm good, bro. That's why some people can recover so well. Yeah. I don't but do a lot of crazy this. shit. <clears throat> I used to I used to say people that I used to tell I used to thought that, you know, if you just work on one area of your body, that shit just didn't work. I'm at a point now where that's what I'm doing. Like I'm picking days and working on one area of my body, and the shit works pretty damn good. That full body shit is cool, but that's good for weight I loss. I never, I never liked full body, but I, but I do. I love full body, but I do put body combinations <laughs> together. I do a push or pull on a leg day, right? And I have a fourth day where I just pick a variety and I, I work core mostly, and I just take two different exercises and I'll do ten sets of them. Yeah, I, I do. I, I do. I don't believe in separating muscles because those are people that compete. There's no reason right. for you to just have a day where you do arms. Right. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Because when you spread out body parts, you're going to be in the gym five days a week. I don't try yeah. to go to the gym no more than three days a week, four at the most. I do. Um, you don't have to Monday. be there all day. No, on Mondays I do chest, chest, arms, and um. And um, everything upper body for the most part. Do everything upper body for the most part. Just building up my chest and strength. Because oh, at one point I couldn't do fucking five push-ups. I ain't gonna even front to you. Couldn't do five push-ups. What push do you what do you what do you call upper body? You say you do uh, chest, upper, arms, and what? Chest, arms, um, chest, arms. You should, your your, your biceps, your biceps are associated mm -hmm. with your back workout. Back, right. It does, it does. Mm-hmm. It does. You're right. But you said chest and arms. But I'm, I ain't finished talking about it. I jumped around. Chest, no, arms, you back. said arms. There's only two pieces of arms. <laughs> right. Of course, you, you know what I mean? I'm I'm benching. I'm doing um, I'm dumbbell curls. I'm working on I'm working on building this up. Get, you know, make sure I have no yeah, titties but no when more. You, when, you, when you do back. that, you're working mm -hmm. your biceps on days back to back. Because when you work your back, you're working your biceps. What I'm saying. Right. But no, I'm saying I'm working my back That's and all that the strength. same day. No, I'm saying I'm working all that the same day. I'm the back chest, with your chest? Arms, so you're doing yeah, your whole back. body in one day? Yeah, I'm doing a whole upper body one day. And I do core every day. I mean, I don't I don't I don't I don't see your motive, man. I do core every day. It's been your working motive. for me. It's been working for me. But you said you saw. Being I'm sore, sore today it works. I'm sore today because I think I'm doing too I'm doing too many days Bruh, back to back. I, I don't have no I don't have I'm not doing no rest day. I don't care. I haven't what done you a rest do. day in a while. Bruh, this is what I'm saying to you. I don't care what plan you do. It's mm -hmm. going to work because you're doing something and you wasn't doing shit. Right, right, right. So it's not because what you're doing is working. It's just your body is being affected by you working, period. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on. Everything's going to work for you right now. You in the beginning stages because you wasn't doing nothing. Your body's shot. Everything's going to work. But you don't want to overwork muscles. That's true. 
Like you're doubling up on shit that you don't have to double up on. That's what I'm saying. Well, give me a plan, back, then, nigga. Give me a plan. Back. No, I'm telling you, this is why I do push and pull uh-huh. and legs, because that works for a person that works every day. So you can lift weights three days and you still have everything work. Mm-hmm. And every body part is still being worked. Like a push, a push would be bench, you got your chest exercises, you got mm-hmm. your shoulder exercises, you got your mm-hmm. triceps. That's what I mean. Right? Those are shoulders those are pushes. and stuff. You're right. right. Pull is just your back and your biceps. Mm-hmm. I do one exercise by itself, then I do a tricep, I do a superset, then I do another exercise by itself, and I'm out. Mm-hmm. Everything is worked. You ain't got to do all the exercises in one day. I do triceps because I'm getting that pump. A tricep, mm-hmm. I might have, I might do, I might do incline, then I might do some chest busters, and then right. I'll do a shoulder exercise, maybe some laterals or something. Right. Then I might do a superset where I do some straight shoulder presses mm-hmm. and then I might do some shit on, 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 on some real lightweight. Right. You know what I'm saying? If I do a tricep, I do three sets of them. If I do a super set, I do four sets of them. My regular exercises, I do two warm-up sets and three working sets. And I'm out, man. A lot of extra shit's gonna have you sore as fuck. And it ain't gonna make you look no, no better because you do more shit. We ain't young niggas, man. You I'm can wear yourself in. out. I'm trying to get in the... Ooh, club, yeah, okay. nigga. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Less is more a lot of times in that weight room. No, man. you're right, though. You're right. I don't, you develop, I don't you there, develop when I don't you, you develop when you rest. I don't be in there as but, much as, as long as I used but to be. But a, a leg day needs that isolated time. On my fourth day, I would just do core shit. I would do pull-ups. I would take a kettlebell and, and do the wraparound. I just started with those. Okay. I might just get on the bench and do 10 sets and just... 12 reps, just, just getting a little chest pump, just to have an extra day to work my chest. And I'll pick another exercise that I'll just do. The four How much days, weight I you put on for your bench? bench? It depends. I mean, well, I might do four and some chains one day. One day I might not. Depends how I fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you wild. So. If I throw it up 10 times, I'm a wild. That's life for me. Oh, you just do one, you just do one set of 10? That's my last set. My oh, last okay. two sets, I might do it for 10. That's it? Just one set? No, I end up on the bench. I end up doing like ten sets when I bench because I do two. Oh, so you sets. do ten? You do ten sets of ten? No, I do two warm up sets and then I do a pyramid, anywhere from six to fifteen reps. I do a pyramid. I go up. I stop at four hundred. Okay. I start. I warm up with two plates, then I do three plates, then I do three plates in the quarter, then I do four plates for two sets. Most so of people really, it's two plates. I ain't doing. It's two. Like it's two. The weight don't matter. This nigga. That's how niggas get fucked up. That's why niggas mm. be hurting themselves. And that's why niggas quit. But they look at what that's somebody else left and they feel like, yo, nigga, a lot of niggas that squat, they need to squat the bar. That's a fact. I watched niggas a dude yesterday. Me. Man, niggas <laughs> kill me. Oh, I don't he squat. was struggling. He yeah, was struggling I don't like squat. a motherfucker. I don't squat because it hurt my knees. No, it don't. No, it don't. It hurts your you, knees because you, you got right. too much weight on that motherfucker, yeah. man. If you do it right, it don't hurt your knees. Even when you're on a leg press, they get in there. Ah, ah, all that goddamn yelling, nigga. Ain't nobody ask you to put eight plates on each side? Yeah, they wild. People that compete, they do this shit, but for the everyday person, like I tell people that work, man, I don't be lifting a bunch of heavy shit. If I can't get 10 reps out of that shit, I don't fuck Mm. with it. My last set- Too too bad knees, I don't go crazy. My last set, I might only get six reps. My weight might be heavy, but if I push the six, I'll take that for my last rep. But if I'm not getting- You try to max out for the day. I don't max out shit. I don't try to max out. Sometimes your muscles be burnt out and you can't get a six. Right. six, right. No, no, it's all respect. It happens. Sometimes that shit that's not heavy today <laughs> might be heavy next week. That's a fact. Sometimes I do pull-ups. I get the, I do the hammer grip on pull-ups because that works the biceps too. I haven't sometimes, I haven't done a pull-up yet, man. I'm, I'm sometimes I do 10. Sometimes I do three and be like, man, fuck these pull-ups. I haven't, I haven't done a pull-up yet. I'm building up to do pull-ups. Nah. If you work in your upper body, ain't nothing gonna hit it better than a pull up. Just like when you work your back. If you if you hold a close grip on your pull downs, that works your biceps better than any curl you'll ever do. Okay. The niggas ain't gonna tell you that real shit because they wanna do the sexy shit in the gym. They wanna hold the shit wide. Ah, yeah, hold it wide, yo. That shit ain't doing nothing, bro. <laughs> if you realize how small what of a muscle saying, you work in, hold that shit close, that shit work your biceps better than you work a curl. Okay. Better than you work a curl. And all this shit. 
Ah, that shit ain't shit, man. All right, see, teach a nigga something, bro. Man, I be laughing at them dudes in the gym, man. Like, all y'all doing is just certain exercises do look sexy, though. Look like a shoulder press with the barbell. That shit look yeah. all sexy. You better off getting the, getting the plate loaded one because it's safer and it's a better range of motion. Because when you're standing right. up doing it, you got to stand so funny to get the proper motion. Right, if you go right, on the right. plate loader machine, you already in a position. You ain't got to do nothing but go up. Yeah, that's true. Nah, man. I've been, I've, I've been studying this bodybuilding shit for a while, man, because I don't want to make mistakes doing that shit because I hurt myself before. Because you watch these dudes do all this crazy shit and you be out there, I'm going to do this shit. Ah, ah, ah. Then you wake up in the morning like, oh, God damn. <laughs> I just think I'm not giving my body. I'm Honestly, this is my first time hurting. I I, don't, I haven't gave my body any um, break. I haven't given my body a break. Like, I was going to go to the gym today, but I was That's like, That's why I only go chill. three days a week. If you feel yeah, like you got to go extra days, take them days and just do cardio. That's how you flip it. Either just do cardio or core work. Don't lift no weights. Mm -hmm. That's why I go when I go on my fourth day. Only reason why I do a little bit of bench because I know my body can take it. But my fourth day, I'm not really doing them but pull ups. I'm doing the ab rollouts with the curl, and I'm doing the wrap around with the joint. I knew my and body. I might, was I might do weird. um, I might do calf uh -huh. raises or something like that. Calf raises. Yeah, I knew my body was feeling weird when I got home yesterday, and um, the boy was like, "Dad, let's do some push ups." And dog, as soon as I got down, my right arm started shaking like a leaf on a tree. I said, "Yeah, I'm doing too much." I had too many days in a row. You're about to got to recover. But you know I had to knock the push outs with the boy. Nobody talks about recovery time. No, nah, you got to definitely recover. You got to recover. That's why I prefer a push, pull, and a leg day. That's why it's hard for me to work out with people because people love to feel like, oh, I got to, because the other drugs work, but I got to have a chest day, man. We never do a chest day. And now I'm still progressing. And now this dude is skinny as hell because he stopped working out. The key is to put together a plan that you can maintain so your body don't fall off if you miss a few weeks. Right. A lot of people work out plans. If they miss a week or two, man, their whole body fails. Because you can smoke and mirror yourself all day up in there, man. It's, I'll it's say this. Nice I, I love I love what love not being a um, fat nigga anymore. Excuse my French. Overly fat nigga anymore. Well, that's what you were? Okay, all right. Yeah, man, it was overly fat, nigga. I'm yeah, glad I ain't yeah, that. Yeah, you had titties. That's what it is. Yo, knocking that shit off, bro. You feel better. You look better. Feel better, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's feel right. A lot better. Feel Those a lot better. better. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Old shit, hella baggy. Like, God damn, son, I was that big? Imagine that. I hate your sarcastic ass ways right now, son. <laughs> ah, everybody, ass everybody ass had an issue with how I eat. Me going to the gym, it was funny. Everybody had jokes and shit. I never had any jokes for you, sir. No, you did. You, did. you choke everything. So I'll stop lying. Well, you know, I talk shit, but you I was always, I always commended you for being so diligent to your ways. Yo, we gotta hit the V. We gotta hit the fucking get the, get the sushi burritos, huh? We ain't done that in a while. That is true. We ain't done that in a while. You don't really be fucking with me like that. That's why. Why? Just do the pod. If you want to, if you want to tell these podcast people that, I'm gonna <laughs> let that go. That doesn't make sense. Yo, let's get into the um the the coup de grace of this shit. Um. Let's talk Deion Sanders, man. <clears throat> and let's not talk in a manner of the football team wins and losses because they lost their first game to well, it's Oregon. Deeper than, it's deeper than football. Right. Because we all knew they was going to lose that game to Oregon. We if you if you're a football play, if you're a football person, you watch football, you knew that that shit was destined for the L. But let's so, talk about the love and the hate factor of Deion Sanders. Because it's a lot of us that love him. But then it's a lot of us that hate him. And I'm not talking about um the European community. Yeah, black people. I'm talking yeah. about the the black community. Well, for me, matter of fact, I sent my son a vocal message. Um, I was driving, so I sent him a voice message. We voice message back and forth sometimes. And uh I said to him, when I look at Dion, I look at it more as a, more um of a black man giving back to his community more so than a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, a lot of our black males, as they grow up, they don't have a lot of positive figures. And he's given them that. Definitely. He's a highly he's a highly confident person. And when you're confident, insecure people always have a problem with you. I agree. I don't care on what level it is. He's on a grand scale. 
He's the baby, the best cornerback to ever play football. Yes. So he's done this at a high level. He's coaching these young men to be accountable. He's coaching these young men to be confident. Right. They're not doing anything disrespectful. I thought the players stepping on the O, I thought that was trash. That was but that had much. nothing to do with Dion. And I'm sure right. Dion said something to them about that. And if you're familiar with Dion as a player, Dion never did anything like that. No, he didn't do that. He shit. took everything to the field. When Dion yells at these players, and coaches always yell at their players, after every yell, he will hug his players and tell them he loves them. Yeah. I'm waiting to see which part of his coaching, which part of his coaching system do you have a problem with? Only problem people have with him is him. And that means you have an insecurity of his security. That means right. the problem is with these people. He right. hasn't done anything wrong. People saying he left Jackson State too soon. How are you going to tell this man where to work at? Because he was there, what, three, four years already? He rebuilt that program. He had an opportunity that was better for his son. His son has a chance to be a top five NFL pick. Yo. You can say, oh, he could have done that from Jackson State. No, okay. he could he has a better opportunity to do it from Colorado. Now he's definitely a top five pick because at Jackson yeah. State, we all were saying, I wonder what he would do against top level division one competition. We can't say that now. We we already know what he'll do. We see it. We see it. <laughs> that boy, that boy is poised. You can't say nothing about Oregon, but I, I take from that Oregon game is he got up and he kept going. He ran every play precisely. With no fear. Got sacked six times. He kept getting up. He kept playing. Those numbers don't matter to me. Yeah, we talked about it offline earlier, and I said those numbers weren't good. Because the numbers don't matter to me. What matters no, to me, he it's, got it's up every else. play. It's, 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 all it's encompassing him. as a quarterback and a leader. He kept playing. He <laughs> kept tangibles. having faith in his offensive line. He knows that offensive line isn't good. But he pushes them like his father pushes them to play hard and play well. They won one game last year, and they already won, won three. And he's the head of that. How yep. do you not like Dion as a coach? How? What is he doing right. wrong? What is he doing wrong? Even when he was at Jackson State, he gave the walk on a scholarship right in front of the mother. Yep. What? Come on, man. What more this guy got to do? Now, Bro, you can say. Go uh -huh. ahead. Go ahead. No, 60 Minutes interview did the interview with him. And you can see how how that uh, reporter was trying to frame things. Then the sixty Minutes reporter interviewed three white players. That's under Dion, and each one of them said, "I love him." They're like, "We we yes, but yeah, he he tried yes. We decided to stay because we knew that we can handle what he's um giving." So, up. do they think he mistreats the white players? No, right, dog. The way they no, the way I think that reporter they do. Was to I think it, I th I think they do. I think, I think they, they do did. too. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that from? I don't know. They try to frame it. Why you didn't leave? They, each one of them said why they didn't leave. They they each know the start, one of them broke the that shit down. End, the starting tight end is white. They know that it's right. white. Yes. The guy that right. caught the touchdown was white. Yeah. And okay. the last game before that, he scored. He scored the winning the the, no, the most. The, I think the winning touchdown in overtime and double overtime. Bro. The tight end is good. He's actually good. It's damn good. Yeah. Okay, just let's not act like there ain't no white people on this team. Right. Nobody got sent away because they were white. Nope. There was a talent problem. That team won one game last year. That team was not good, son. They were not good. Dion has took a team that wasn't generating revenue and put right. them in a position where they can pay Dion his salary. Yep. And they can upgrade facilities and they're going to be able to recruit further talent. Yep. And I don't want to hear nothing about he could have done the same thing at Jackson State because he did do it at Jackson State. He did. He did do it. Quickly. Oh. I don't know what we want for people. No, we let's, let's talk. Like, not even that. Not even that. He tried to get NFL teams to look at HBCUs. He was holding HBCU combines. He created HBCU combines for teams to come in and watch these players. Yeah. And no one yeah. still got drafted. He tried to do his part. He can't control the draft. I mean, sometimes the players just nope. aren't, aren't that good, but you still have a free agent opportunity. But HBCUs are known to bring um, specialty players to the league, you know, cornerbacks, yeah. wide receivers, those kind of things. If you remember, HBCUs was the number one where, where they got all their black picks from. And then it, but, then the, the Power Five team schools started saying, fuck that. 
Let's go ahead and get let's get some of these these black kids. I will I will say this. I'm gonna reiterate this because we've said this on previous podcasts. Whenever a black person is successful, we have an issue with applauding that success. Yes, we do. Our major our major goal is always finding something wrong with this person within that success. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I we agree. can have a relationship conversation and somebody will say, How they talking about relationships? Train ain't married. Right. They gotta find something. Gotta find something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Got to. Yep. So how can they talk about hip hop? He ain't got no deal. He's been rocking forever. You know what I'm saying? It's always gonna be something. You know what I'm saying? He been married before and he been divorced. What he know about marriage? What he know about relationships? Right? Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's always gonna be something where somebody wants to find something wrong. You know what I mean? Or oh, seeing me in the gym and the transformation. I remember when I used to drink every day. He ain't talking about nothing. I right, never, exactly. I never ran exactly. from that. Dion never nope. ran from his pitfalls. Nope. You know what I'm saying? He embraces but, but bro, make sure he's a damn good father, man. He he yo, he does what he ha- what he can for his, his little ones, bro. I said to my own son, I can't imagine the joy of watching my child develop as an athlete and as a man right before my eyes and the world being able to see it. Right. Them boys have done nothing to tarnish the name or brand. Because the name Sanders is a brand. They've done oh, yeah, nothing nah, to tarnish that. Shiloh has a... Shiloh has maximized his talent. Yes. He's not the same talent as his brother. He's maximized his talent. He's changed yeah. positions within his progressions and maximized yep. his talent. There's nothing he's a he linebacker. He's, I think he's still a linebacker, right? Or is he a corner? No, I think he's a safety. A safety. Because I remember he was linebacker at one time. He used to be a quarterback. Yeah, but his brothers is better, and and Dion saw it. You know what I mean? And and just watching that man, I I just and then people acting like they 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 uh took a L. They lost the game, but they didn't take a L. No, nah. they lost to a number ten ranked team. Muhammad Ali got knocked out several times. Yep. You know what I'm saying, does that take away from his greatness? Nope. You know, the end of Mike Tyson's career, he was a shadow of himself. Does that take away from his greatness? Never. I just Never. wish people would just, yo, enjoy the greatness that we're witnessing right now. The I same say thing judge it, like judge it for man. what it is and, and not what they want it to be. They're definitely judging it from a skewed lens perspective. Yeah, but when white people do it to us, we're mad. Bro. They see us doing it topic. to ourselves. We stay doing that shit to ourselves, bro. Just like they want to pull a race car with what the Oregon guy, coach said. That man ain't had nothing to do with black and white. That man just wanted to whoop Colorado ass on the football field, and they did that. And they so now we that. mad. So we now we mad at that coach because his team whooped Colorado ass. What was he supposed to do? <laughs> Let Colorado win? Right. No. Nope. And what Dion said was what he's supposed to say. You yep. got me, but I'm going to get there. That's competition, yep. bro. That's competition. That's competition. And football is as competitive as any sport. And if you really watch that game closely, I was disappointed in some of Colorado defense and the antics they were doing. Because a lot of plays, they laid off a couple dirty hits, man. Yeah, they standing on top of people and talking all that shit. You getting your ass whipped, nigga. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, (laughs) just and get this game over with. Word. Don't let them score no more. How about you do that? No, I'm, I'm with you. Dion, I'm with bro. you. I'm, I'm with Dion, you. Man. I think he's doing a phenomenal job as a coach, as a mentor, as an example. No, nah, he I did mean, a phenomenal job, he's, bro. He's definitely a corporate acquisition, but I don't see nothing wrong with that. He's a brand. He took his brand to where his brand was welcome. All of these teams could have offered him a position. You're right. Colorado You're has right. faith in him. He took a chance on them. They took a chance on him. On him. And it worked. Yep. Yep. And it worked. Yep. You're right. You damn sure right. You damn sure right. Hey, I'm proud of him like he's my own cousin. <laughs> For real. I think I, I think I predicted I think. three games. I predicted three games this year. Yep, you did. Mm-hmm. And they already and got they, it. They exceeded that. So everything they get past this three, the bonus. And you only need they six to go to that. a bowl. You only got three wins. He ain't exceeded yet. I mean, he will. Well, yeah. Yeah, they're getting close to it. 
I, I mean, think, we'll I, think I, I think it'll be fine. I mean, these next, these next the couple end. games is going to be, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be on a little hard side, but I mean, but I think they'll be fine. They might go to the London Bridge Bowl, but they're going to go to a bowl game. <laughs> you said the London Bridge Bowl? Like, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, bro. The, the Sushi Yogi Bowl. <laughs> Yo, so let's 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 skip that and let's let's talk about let's talk about um Shannon Sharp, Skip Bales. Um, there was you know more details are coming out, which we kind of already felt that's what Shannon was, you know, what I'm saying why that that breakup happened. But the the caveat is you got people like Marcellus Wiley and um and um and Coontastic um. What's his name? What's your man's name? Oh, you talking about Whitlock? Huh? You talking about Whitlock? Yeah, Whitlock. Coontastic Whitlock. And Marcus Wiley as talking about this in a manner that's like, especially Whitlock. <clears throat> I don't know what it is with Whitlock and his own people, but he, yo, now, he do not like is, black man. people, son. He don't this like black people. That's what it is. He, he's, he's. I mean, but he's created this brand of being that way, so he's going to continue to be that way. Yeah. And it's not that working. Boy. I don't know what he's trying to do with it. The white it's people working. are not going to accept it. working you. for whatever he's trying to get it to work for. Man, that nigga is cool-tastic, bro. He doesn't like anything black people do, and he keeps talking about he's going to expose Dion for what he really is. What are you going to expose? And what do you <laughs> get out of that? always keep talking about exposing someone. He said he was going to expose Shannon Sharp, too. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. He said he wasn't going to expose Shannon Sharp unless he told the truth about why they got rid of him. <laughs> and I know Dion, like, bro, the, the problem is, the, the crazy thing is, I know them guys are like, bro, I will whoop your ass. Who are you talking to like this? Yeah, but they can't. No, I mean, you, you can't. can, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Which is my problem. My problem, and I, and I said to you in a text message, this, this is my issue with us as, as black people. Unfortunately, a lot of times for us to get into these major positions, we need somebody to give us an opportunity. You know what I mean? Right. Whether you're an athlete, artist, whatever it is. Just because someone gives you an opportunity doesn't give them justifiable excuse to mistreat you. Right. Or disrespect you publicly or privately. This is where my issue is. Now, I am one to say that I've always been a fan of Skip Bayless in his shows. You know, I, I like his takes. Even when it's outrageous, I find it entertaining. He's a good right. heel. That doesn't mean I'm okay with the way he disrespected Shannon Shaw. These are two different conversations. You know what I'm saying? I don't like what he did. That doesn't have anything to do with me liking him as a person. I don't like what he right. did at all. I think it was some bullshit. A lot of people respect Shannon Shaw. He's a brand. He's like a really a champion for us, you could say, because he's on a network that we watch. Right. And we look forward to hearing him speak on sports. I don't think Skip is a racist, but I think Skip is an asshole. He's always been an asshole. Right. Nothing he does surprises me, but that did. To the level he took it, that did. To say he was jealous of Tom Brady, to say that he ended his career at 35 and Tom Brady played until whatever age, all that was some hate that he had inside. Jealousy more so I would say than hate he had inside for Shannon Sharp, because Shannon Sharp became popular. He got his liquor brand. He had his right. own show. I think Shannon Sharp was the first person to work with Skip to have outside revenue while working yes. with Skip. That yep. never happened before. And I think he was intimidated by that. And that had nothing to do with race. We can't put race on everything. This is business. It's that man business, likes right. it. Skip owns that show. He likes being the leader of that show. Shannon got to a point where he respected Skip as a leader, but he didn't need Skip as a leader anymore. Shannon didn't carry it that way, but a lot of times for people, it doesn't matter how you carry it. They just feel what they fucking feel. Yep. You could be the most respectful person in the world, and if somebody's jealous of you, they just jealous of you. It has nothing to do with you being a humbling participant. It doesn't even matter. We can have this podcast together all day and speak all cordial. If I'm jealous, right. I'm going to be a nasty motherfucker. Regardless of how nice and cordial you are to me, I'm just going to be a nasty motherfucker because that's what I am. 
Skip is a nasty person, man. He just is. He always has it been. Just, it's just sad. And as you get older, all... if you're a nasty person, when you get older, it amplifies. Because you've been nasty right. so long, bro, you don't even see the wrong in your nastiness. He's even done it with Shannon. What? What did I say? I don't know. Nobody had a problem with my tweet. What do you mean nobody had a problem with your tweet? Right. I was insensitive as a motherfucker. That nigga was laying there and could have been dead. And you're talking about damn near hurry up with the game. Yo, it's just it's just sad that how all of this is now playing out in the media and how the media is how I mean, because they're they're playing it out for themselves. You know, you got he's on Stephen A's show on his podcast. They bringing it up. They talking about it. And it seemed like that's what they've been doing. I guess they trying to make sure that people understand that this is not a Shannon Sharp issue um, <clears throat> and, and whatnot. But then, you, of course, you know how the Fox is running. But then. Even on the on the Marcus Wiley side, where he's bringing up how the fact that maybe Fox is not even feeling Skip and his show, how the show is set up now, and the show isn't that good. It's not that bad though. Let's keep it a buck. Let's not act like it's just bad. No, it's not. It's trash. not that bad, but it's, it's not, not that. It's good. not. Yeah, it's not at the level of Skip always being a top three and top two forever. That show right there is. It's not even a top five show, bro. It's just not. I mean, right. I'm a clip watcher, but I did used to watch Undisputed sometimes at home. I put on a whole show while I'm cleaning up or something. But that I, I can't watch that whole show with them guys. Well, one is too many people. Two, the way it's put together, I'm just not a fan of the dynamic. You know what I mean? Right. He tried something. Then I don't want to hear Little Wayne talking about sports, bro. I mean, he's... then two, I was a fan of Shannon, so I might not like nothing you do after that for a while. Right. I'm kind of not, bro. I'm, I'm kind of not feeling you right now. The way you did, my man. You know what I mean? The way you did, big bro. I'm not kind of feeling you. So, I'm not. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, man. I mean, we back. <laughs> Had a small technical difficulty, but we back, man. That happens from time to time, especially when using Zoom. Um, but I mean, all the points that was made about this particular subject about Shannon Sharp and about Skip Bayless is is on point. Is is real. This is. You know, this is what's been going on. I think I can't wait to get to a point where that's no longer a conversation and both parties can just do what they do. Because on the real, Skip hasn't really been saying much. He's been throwing little darts here and there at Stephen A. To me, it's just more feel like Stephen A has an issue with Skip that he led on, to, you know, that he led on to believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's but my thing is, <clears throat> I don't think it's fair that, it almost seems like, and you can correct me if, if, if you disagree, it almost feels like Stephen A is getting a kick out of what happened with Shannon and Skip because yes. no, totally he wants agree. to find a reason to, yes, not a, re a justification to attack him. That's what yes. I don't like. I, I Shannon, Shannon doesn't really want to talk about it. Don't, he doesn't. He, and he tries not to. Yeah, but Stephen A is making it forcibly communicated. Yep, mm -hmm. every time. If you know Shannon, every Shannon, time. yeah, Shannon is kind of like, yo, he gave me yeah. an opportunity. I'm thankful for it. You know, I had to do what I had to do. Yep. Shannon was cool with it. Mm -hmm. Shannon even went back on the show when he was on the show and performed. Yes, he did. As he said, but mm -hmm. Stephen A is almost forcing him. He didn't want to wanna leave. He didn't want to leave. He still would have stayed. He still, yeah, stayed. he still would have stayed. He did not want to leave because it was a dope show. That's how much he was like, yo, I'm cool with what, what happened, what transpired. It was a dope show, so I kind of get it. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to leave a dope show. The show yeah. was dope. And it ain't was. like the show started slipping. Nope. Now it's e slipping. E yeah, no. Nah, now it's, it's on the floor. But before, that shit was on point. Well, but yo, man, let's go ahead and wrap things up, man. We've been here definitely a little bit over an hour. Give us some great words of wisdom, my brother. Um, I want to say as a dope males, man, let's that's, that's not sleep on the power of mentorship. Um, a lot of these young men, they 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 need us, man. And I had a personal situation where a young man was um very accepting of influence I've been giving him for months, in my probably like a year now. Um he's given to be located and go on his journey, man. And and you know, we took him to breakfast and everything and it's 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 obvious that was needed and it was beneficial to him and others that have been around us during that time. I think a lot of us have a lot to offer, man, and we downplay that. And it'll also give us strength when we can share the good things we've had in life and the things we've overcome because we sharpen each other. And a lot of times we hold things in, man, and we got to get out of that. Um, we have to get to a point of full transparency, which should probably never be 100%, mm -hmm. but we have to be able to communicate things and, and with our women, 
with our friends, and even within the mentorship situation. And even within our parents, if you have parents that yeah. are still alive, mm-hmm. you know, we have to build. Um, you know, I'm not getting too deep on this, man, because this is more so straight to the point. We all have a gift, man, and we have to share those gifts and build, man, and allow ourselves to grow as well within that process. I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, that was great. That was great. That was on point. I totally agree. Um, quick shameless promotion for myself. Check out my show, um, The Vibes, every single Friday and Sunday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on We Got the Jams Radio. Um, each show is different. Um, both of my live shows. Um, my Friday show is more um, hip hop based, more hip hop vibey based. My um, Sunday show is more R and B, um, Afro beats. Um, you know, some hip hop records, but the hip hop records kind of fit the scheme of things. Um, I play a mix of indie and major acts just to give a blend to show people that in it's a lot of indie artists that music do fit a major major sound. And um and things like that, you know what I mean? So it's a link that'll be in the description of the show. Or you can just type in the vibes with Tall Sean in Google and it'll pop right up. T-A-L-L-S-H-O-N. It'll pop. On another note, man, we need your interactions. If you're listening, if you're watching, yes. we need you to click the like. We need you to hit the subscribe. We need your comments. It's, definitely we need that to move forward. We need to hear from you how maybe we can get better. Or if there's a topic that interests you, you know, we want to hear that. We want to go back and forth with you. Eventually, we'll do another live. Yeah, I was um, going to talk to you about that, too. Yeah, the watch. interactions was dope every time we've ever done a live. Mm-hmm. When we did the video live, especially. Yeah. But, yo, we, we want to hear from you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't You ain't, like, on our dick or nothing because you click like or you comment. We're not Facts. walking around with our chest poked out. No, we, we want to hear from you. Like, yeah. we actually do every project we do from the heart, yes. you know? Me doing hip hop, I do that from the heart. These are things that mean something to me. Like there are deeper projects I'm gonna be doing. I want that interaction. That's what this is all about. It's all a form of self care. It's all a form of therapy. We're not coming from a position of knowing at all. Cause okay. I can honestly tell you, a lot of things I speak on, I'm learning as I go along. Cause I could be doing a whole lot better with a lot of my relationships and a I lot of my interactions my with people I care about. I know all my shit. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm saying. Yeah. Anybody same tells boat. you that is same worse boat. than me. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Because <laughs> my dumb ass used to tell me that shit. <laughs> and I have been awakened. <laughs> we all have, my brother. No, he's right, though. <laughs> Definitely click the like button, share, comment, let people know um, yeah, you know man. what's going on. I'll say the YouTube channel has grown a lot. It's over um, that we got a overload of subscribers in the past couple of weeks. Um even the numbers on the pods on the video, but you know, the audio is doing great, but we want to keep the audio doing great. So keep letting people know about the black male podcast. And we appreciate that. Like, you know, we're working hard over here and we know 2024, we're going to be spending money on promo. We're going to get more people and known about what we're going on. And we're going to do more live. I think next year we're going to really do more live, live pods. Even if we're not in the same building, I think we can still finagle a little way to do a dope live show. It's better if we're in the same building. Bro. Figure it out. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. Well, I'm told Sean T.S. is who I am. Say that is who I am. Damn. This is the Black Mill Podcast, episode 117. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Peace. Yep. Yeah.